hello guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'll be sharing with you on how i made this shirt with an elastic waistband rope and a ton of hem i made this shirt for my kimono jacket and people seem to like it so i decided to film this one i'm making for a client for you guys if you'd like to see how i achieve my result then keep watching For this tutorial, I'm working with this Ankara print, some elastic and a shirt color interfacing. I'll be using this black cotton lining for the pattern drafting so that you can see my markings clearly. The total length of the shirt is 18 inches. From this, I will minus 2 inches the width of the waistband. This leaves me with 16 inches. I will minus half an inch from this 16 inches to join to the turn up piece and this leaves me with 15 and half inches. The width of the turn-up piece on this shirt is 1.5 inches and on the wrong side you will see an extended half inch of the turn-up piece that is joined to the shirt, completing the length of the shirt 16 inches after the width of the waistband has been minus. The reason for this is because I do not want the joining of the turn-up piece to the shirt to be at the hem of the shirt. You can as well cut your turn-up piece together with the shirt but for this particular style I cut the turn-up piece separately. So the total length of what we'll be working with as the length of the body of our shirt after minusing all these is 15 and half inches. I'll go ahead and mark the 15 and half inches and square out the point. The hip level I'm working with is 8 inches and a crotch height of 10 inches. Minus the 2 inches width of the waistband, the hip level becomes 6 inches and a crotch height of 8 inches. I will impute this measurement and square out the points. So guys, I'm checking to see if I folded enough fabric to accommodate the hip measurement, the crotch extension and some ease and I think I folded enough so I'll go ahead and impute one quarter of my hip measurement. The hip circumference I'm working with is 42 inches, one fourth of that is 10 and a half inches which is what I'm marking here. I'll place this measurement on the crotch height and on the waistline as well and square them out. To get the crotch extension for the front, I will divide one fourth of the hip measurement, which in this case is 10.5 inches by 4. This gives me 2.6 inches. I will place this measurement on the crotch line from the center front line outwards. Before I draw the crotch curve, I will square down the side seam to the hem of the shirt. Then I'll find the midpoint on the crotch line and place that on the hem and connect these two points with a broken line. To get the right crotch curve, I will divide the point from the hip level to the crotch level into two. I'll also divide the crotch extension on the crotch level into two. The front crotch curve is a shallow curve, so this method helps you not to get a deep crotch curve. I will connect the midpoint between the hip level and the crotch level to the last point on the crotch extension like so. Then I will connect the hip level point to the midpoint of the crotch extension. I will place one fourth of the thigh circumference here, for me is 12 and a half inches. I will center this measurement on the midpoint line and on both sides I will have 6.25 inches. If you want it tapered at the hem, place one fourth of the hem circumference instead and connect to the crotch level. On the waistline and on the crotch line, I will add extra 1 inch for ease and I will connect these points to the hem. I didn't add 1 inch to the hem because I used the tight circumference, but if you use the hem circumference, please add 1 inch, except where you really want it tapered at the hem. On the center front, I will go out by 1.5 inches to create an imaginary zipper fly effect. 
but this will be stitch closed completely you can skip this part if you do not want it but this is just to just up the shot and not make it look so plain i'll go ahead and add seam allowance on the waistline there are no seam allowance on the inseam and side seam then half inch seam allowance on the hem to join to the tunnel piece so guys this is the pattern i've cut it out on the print and i want you guys to see that it's the same with what we've drafted the only difference is the seam allowance on the print which is not on the pattern for the back pattern i will retrace the front pattern on this side and we will develop the back pattern from it so that we don't get things mixed up so guys i've done that i've given enough space on the sides to accommodate my measurements i have here the front pattern and i've marked out the important lines from the center front line of the front pattern i will mark the bust span or nipple to nipple measurement of four inches I will extend the center front line of the front pattern upwards so that we can see clearly what we are doing. I will divide these 4 inches in half and this gives me 2 inches. I will extend that point upwards as well. On that extended 2 inches line, I will place the front crotch extension measurement. For me, it's 2.6 inches. I will place this measurement with my tape on the waistline, not on the seam allowance line. We got this measurement by dividing one fourth of the hip measurement by four. So you go ahead and do the same with your measurements. For the back crotch extension, I went out by two inches. From that two inches point, I came down by half an inch. The reason for this is because the female body slopes downwards to the back. This will also prevent your shot from entering in between your butt cheeks. Before I draw in the center back curve, on the front pattern, at the point where the center front line intersects with the crotch line, I will go out by 2 inches. This is just a guide to help me get the right center back curve. So with these points, I will draw in my back center curve line. So the next thing we are going to do is to place the waist measurement of the back and for this I use the hip measurement. Remember that this shot has elastic on the waistline. So I will report the original measurement of the front pattern to the back. This extended piece here on the front pattern is the 1 inch ease I added on the front pattern. With my tape on the center back line, I will place 10 and half inches one fourth of my hip measurement till it touches the waistline of the front. I will make a point there and draw in my back waistline. I will go ahead and add extra one inch for ease on the waistline, crotch line and on both sides of the hem and connect these points. On the waistline, I went up by 0.25 inch to properly blend in the back waistline. Because I've already cut out the front pattern and I forgot to do this, I balanced up the side seams by trimming off 0.25 inch from the half inch seam allowance on the back waistline, just on the side seam where it will be joined to the front panel. To draw the back inseam curve and ensure that the both inseams matches, I will measure the inseam of the front. Here I have 7.25 inches and this is without the seam allowance. I will divide it into two and place the first half and connect with a straight line. Then I will measure and rotate my tape in a slightly curved manner till the 7.25 inches fall on the new crotch line. I will follow this curve with my jerk and draw in the back inseam curve. So I'm just measuring to reconfirm my measurement. I'll go ahead and add half inch seam allowance on the waistline, hem and the center back of the shirt. There are no seam allowance on the inseam and side seams. I have cut out the back pattern on the print and you can see it's exactly the same with what we have drafted. The only difference is the seam allowance I added on the print. Every other thing is the same. I'll let you guys watch through while I show you that the two patterns are the same.
for the buckets on the front pattern i came in by two and a half inches on the waistline and went down by four inches and connected these two points with my french curve i'll go ahead and cut out my pocket pieces i have cut out the pockets and i have here four pieces in total measuring nine inches in length by seven inches i'll go ahead and cut out the pocket opening on the shirt and shape the pocket pieces I have cut out the pocket opening on the shirt with two of the pocket facing. I will assemble the rest of the pocket with the shirt and shape the side so that it blends with the shirt. So guys, I'm done with the pockets and I've cut out the rest of the pieces. I have here the back panels, the turn up piece for the back panels. The width unfold measured two and a half inches and this includes seam allowance so when you open it up you have five inches in width i have some elastic for the waistband and interfacing for the button holes the two pockets for both sides of the shirt the front panels the turn up piece for the front panel some strips of fabric for the rope and then the waistband I'll start by attaching the pockets. I'll place the right side of the pocket facing to the right side of the shirt and attach with a straight stitch. I'll not round the cuffed corners to release any tension and I'll top stitch the seam allowance to the pocket facing. This is what your pocket will look like. I'll place the second panel and stitch round the edges to secure it. So guys, I've done that. I've attached the pocket on both sides of the shirt. I'll go ahead and attach the panels together. I'll run a straight stitch on the center front line to one inch away from the inseam. The two panels has been attached. Next, we are going to run a top stitch on the imaginary zipper fly extension. Remember, the female zipper fly is on the left. So I'll take this to my machine and run this top stitch. So guys, the imaginary zipper fly on the front pattern has been top stitched. Please do not forget to overlock raw edges before you do this. I will go ahead and join the back panels. To join the back panels, I will run a straight stitch on the center back panel to one inch away from the inseam. The next thing we are going to do is to attach the turn up pieces for each panel. So I'm starting with the back panel. To attach this turn up piece, I'm going to open up the turn up piece and Place the right side of the turn up piece to the right side of the shirt and attach with a straight stitch. So, guys, I've attached the turn up piece on all four panels. Before we continue, I will fold it in like so and trim off the excess on all fours, and then I'll go ahead and join the front and back panels together. Now that I'm done trimming off the excess of the turn up piece on all fours, remember the turn up piece has not been top stitched yet, it's still open. I'll go ahead and join the front and back panels on the sides and at the inseams as well. So guys, I've done all that. Before I stitch close the center front and back seam, I'm going to run a top stitch on the side seams and on the inseams as well. If you're not doing any top stitch, just go ahead and stitch close the center front and back seam. So now that we have done all the top stitching, I'll go ahead and stitch close the center front and back seam notch round the curved corners to release any tension and overlock it
so guys i've done all that and this is what our shot is looking like now we are going to run a top stitch from the seam allowance of the zipper fly all the way to the back The stitches has been made, we'll go ahead and finish up the turn up pieces. I have turned it to the wrong side and I'll pin it in place in a way that when I do the top stitch on the right side of the shot, I'll be able to catch the fabric on the wrong side. I have done the first spinning on the wrong side to properly align the seams. I will turn it to the right side of the shot and follow the lines of the pin and repin on the right side of the shot because that's where I'll be doing the top stitch on. So guys I've done the pinning off camera and here I'm running the top stitch. You can as well make your top stitch fabric to be on the right side just like when we attach the waistband to a shirt or a skirt. So guys, the turn up piece has been attached on both legs and this is what it looks like on the right side. Hope you guys can see that and on the wrong side as well. Now I'm going to turn it up at one and a half inches. Remember the width of the turn off piece with seam allowance on fold is two and a half inches and we are left with two inches after joining the piece to the short. So I have folded at one and a half inches the width of the turn up piece. The remaining half inch completes the length of the shot which is 16 inches. We also use the half inch to hide the joining of the turn up piece to the shirt. Before I take this to my machine, I will measure to confirm that I have all measurements correct. So here I have my one and a half turn up piece. The length of the shirt which is 16 inches plus half inch seam allowance to attach to the waistband making it 16 and half inches. I'll take this to my machine and run back tags on the seam allowance line on the sides to secure the turn up piece. So guys I've run the back tags just at the tip of the turn up piece as you can see. You can as well run a full stitch all the way down to the hem. Next we will attach the waistband so I'm going to attach with the right side of the waistband to the wrong side of the shot with a straight stitch. Before I turn it over to top stitch on the right side of the shot, we will create the button holes for the rope and we'll be doing this on the side of the waistband that will be top stitched on the shot. The width of my waistband is 2 inches, half of that is 1 inch. On that 1 inch line at the center front line, I will go out by 1 inch on both sides. And on that line, I will create a half inch button holes, 0.25 inch on each side of the line as shown in the diagram. Once my markings are made for the button holes, I will pin in place this interfacing on that point and create the button holes. This is important to add the interfacing on the point where you'll be doing the buttonhole to stabilize the fabric and get a better buttonhole. So guys here it is, I'll clip open the buttonholes, stitch close the waistband and attach the elastic. I will also prepare the ropes. The length of my elastic is 1.5 inches shorter than the waist circumference. The waist circumference is 26 inches and the width of my elastic is 1.75 inches. To create the channel for the rope, you follow the width of the button hole and run stitches round the waist circumference as shown in the diagram. Then you go ahead and insert your rope. As you run these stitches, please ensure to stretch out your elastic like I am doing. So guys, that's all there is to this tutorial. If you find it helpful, do not forget to like, share, comment, leave all your questions in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in my next one. A bientôt!